Sleep. Yep, we all do it on a daily basis. In fact, the average human being spends approximately one third of their life sleeping. That means if you are fortunate enough to live till the age of 75, 25 of those years will be spent engaged in sleep. However, for a Muslim, we have nothing to despair over because that time can be spent in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and gaining reward. That is, of course, if it is done in accordance to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So here are some sunnah steps of sleeping. Number one, sleeping in a state of purity. Sayyidina Abu Darda radiallahu anhu has said, when a person sleeps, his soul rises to the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he slept with wudu, the soul is permitted to make sajda. And if he slept in a state of impurity, permission for sajda is refused. Therefore, we should ensure that we sleep in a state of complete purity with wudu for us to gain this lofty position. Number 2. Reciting certain portions of the Qur'an before sleeping Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha narrates that when the Prophet wasallam went to sleep every night, he would hold his hands together and blow into them and recite into them, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ and قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ That is the last three surahs of the Qur'an al-Kareem. Then he would wipe his hands over whatever he could of his body, starting with his head and face and the front of his body, and he would do this three times. Number three, sleeping on the right side. It has been recorded that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would sleep on his right side facing the qibla with his right hand under his right cheek. Sleeping on one's right side is scientifically proven to reduce snoring and back and neck pains and also helps with digestion. Sleeping on one's back is permissible as it was the practice of other previous prophets alayhi salatu wa salam. One should refrain from sleeping on one's stomach as this is greatly disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number four, clear your heart and mind of ill feelings for others. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised Anas radiallahu anhu saying, O oh my son, if you are able to awaken and go to bed and there is no malice in your heart for anyone, then do so. Number five, repent from your sins. Abu Sa'id radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whosoever recites while going to bed, أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ الَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ الْحَيُّ الْقَيُّومُ وَأَتُوبُ إِلَيْهِ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive his sins even if they may be as much as the foam of the ocean and as much as the leaves on the trees and as much as the grains of sand and as much as the days of the existence of this world. Number six, reciting the dua for sleeping. Sayyidina Hudayfa radiallahu anhu reports when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would retire to bed he would place his right hand under his right cheek and then he would say Allahumma bismika amutu wa ahya Number 7. Seeing a Nightmare Sayyiduna Abu Qatada radiallahu anhu reports that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said When one of you sees something that you dislike in a dream then he should blow on his left side and seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection from the evil of what he saw for it will not harm him. Some narrations have the word and he should not inform anyone of his dream. If you like this video and you want to see similar type of content from the Ummah squad regarding basic sunan and how to implement them into our lives, then be sure to get in touch with us here at the Ummah squad. And if you like the video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button or subscribe to the Ummah squad. Mm -hmm.